Well, let's talk about the weather here and we'll say hello to Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy with our forewarned forecast. She's in Blanding, Utah at the edge of Cedar State Park for the next stop on the Good for Utah Road Tour. How you doing, Alana? Doing well, Brian. This is such a cool spot in the southeastern corner of the state. We just talked about the story, but what you're getting a view of as we stand here live at Edge of the Cedars is Bears Ears National Monument in the background. But what you see down below, that is actually an ancient ruin. That is a great house and kiva unearthed on site here at Edge of the Cedars Museum. It's a thousand years old and it was excavated and visitors are allowed to go look they actually can climb a ladder down into the great house and see how our ancestors were living in this area thousands and thousands of years ago. So not only is it a museum with fantastic collections inside the building, but outside you get an up close personal view with history and Utah history, Four Corners history. And this is also the spot where they house the most pottery on display for ancestral Puebloans on display in the four corners. And that's right here in our backyard. We love Edge of the Cedars. That's why we had to come down. It's why it's on the Good for Utah Road Tour. And even with cloudy conditions here in Blanding, still a pretty nice day. Temperatures sitting at 61 degrees. You see those unsettled conditions behind me. We have seen a few pop up showers over the Abajos, which are just to our west. But that's not only happening in the southeastern corner of the state. We're seeing that for higher terrain throughout the state and some of those rolling into our valley. As you take that live view from daybreak, you see the increased cloud cover and the shower, showery, cloudy conditions kind of signaling moody conditions are out there with moisture potential and those showers popping up. The forewarn radars, we get eyes on that. You're able to see that we are seeing some thunderstorms, lightning included. Looking at the radar, you see west of I-15 over into the West Desert, but also in eastern Utah towards the basin into Grand County and along the Wasatch Front. We get a little closer and you're able to see those latest lightning strikes. They pop up over towards the West Desert. Looks like the Tooele and Rush Valley is getting some active skies right now. Up towards Cache Valley, it's spotty as we head further south and get into central Utah. That includes Beaver County heading south towards Milford and into Iron County. We get echoes of moisture there as well. So a lot of these storms and showers really love the mountains, but they are holding together in some areas. Satellite radar shows us the last few hours where you get this area of low pressure retrograding. It's tracking towards the southwest. This low has a counterclockwise flow around it. So you can imagine we're seeing that wind direction that has shifted now to easterly winds. We're going to talk about that downslope wind event that low also with moisture potential and daytime heating allows for these storms to develop, which is what we're seeing this afternoon and what we've seen for the last several hours. OK, the low hyping up those easterly downslope winds, which is why we're currently under a wind advisory for the Wasatch Front, parts of Cache Valley, Box Elder County and even into Salt Lake County. But that's going to amp up even more for warning you now that peak winds are ahead and at 6 p.m. The northern Wasatch Front sees a high wind warning going into effect. We could see gusts up to 65 miles per hour. So I know the winds are coming back and if you live along the benches for the northern Wasatch Front, tie down everything now. I always take the wreath off the door. As we look at the future cast wind gusts here, you can see high numbers. We're expecting gusts between 50 and 65 miles per hour. They really peak towards midnight and into the early morning hours of Friday daybreak towards the morning commute. We're going to see some strong winds, but you see 30 to 40 miles per hour. Here we are at Friday at 8 a.m. So that means those gusty conditions with our high wind warning stays in effect. We'll stay blustery throughout the day, but the strongest winds expected overnight and into Friday morning. That's the big weather headline in the north. We also keep moisture potential with this low, keeping us unsettled over the state. Futurecast walks us through that where you notice the cloud cover the moisture and that low heading towards southwestern Utah. Now it doesn't stay there. It actually will track east yet again. Here we go into Friday evening and then into Saturday, which is why the slight chance of a storm remains in the forecast for the next couple of days. Eventually high pressure takes over. Our wind direction becomes more southerly and temperatures warm and will dry out. There we are into early Mother's Day. As we look at those daytime highs for tomorrow, 60s along the Wasatch Front, upper 70s expected in St. George. We've got 60s and 70s and the slight chance of a storm in the forecast. Next seven days in St. George shows the winds and the warming trend 
and getting to the 80s and eventually the 90s Mother's Day looks pleasant. The Wasatch Front keeping the slight chance of moisture with that same warming trend underway, bringing us to the 70s by Mother's Day weekend and hopefully some drier conditions as that low exits for the holiday. For now, we're live at Edge of the Cedars, standing in front of a thousand year old great house on top of one of the best museums in the state. And we're all about the good for Utah road tour. Brian, back to you. Lana.